Hi everybody, welcome to this week's video, or the first of this week's two videos anyway. Um, I hope everybody's keeping safe and well. Not going to mention the C word. Um, just a side note today, this video is on uh, retinols and retinoids and retin-A in particular. But just uh, a side note, I found these today in Dunn's, in, in our local Dunn's here, just just food. Microsi microfiber, say it again, microfiber. Um, washcloths, face washcloths, really, really good. Two euro for five, really, really good. Because if anybody doesn't know, um, microfiber, microfiber is just so not a nice, and it's very gentle exfoliating. So um, I just found them and I said, I'm gonna give these a try. So there's just a little uh, side note while we get ready for the video. So, okay. I forgive me I've just been shouted at by a woman who was walking in the middle of the street with her two kids she was walking in the middle of the road with her two children and when I kind of come up behind I tooted very gently and she said and I went oh shit okay um, I said to her well there is a path just here and she then flew off the handle and proceeded to get her children to walk in front of them in the road in the middle of the road so I could get past so we had to call the police for the crazy lady because the poor kids. So please just calm down, folks. What is all oh, calm down? I know the kids are probably driving me mad. I can only imagine. Um, and I'm grateful mine are 25 and 30 and they drive me mad anyway. Um, but just calm down, everybody. Okay, so I'm a little kind of going, that was bizarre that happened there. Anyways, on to skincare. So we've all heard of retinols, retinoids, retin A. Maybe not. In Ireland, we tend to hear of retinols. Okay, so here's an example of a retinol. It's a retinol that my daughter has started using and I was using as well. So it's the Olay Retinol 24 Night Serum, fragrance free. Actually a very, very good retinol. Typical retinoid, kind of a, a retinol. <laughs> Got mixing it up. It's kind of that milky formula. If you can see it there, it's kind of a milky formula. So <clears throat> this is very typical of the over-the-counter stuff, which depending on how concentrated it is, because it never tells you how much is in it, um, <clears throat> it will take two, maybe one to two steps to become retinol. Sometimes it can take three steps. So when I say three steps, that's three conversions, three methods of conversion it's going to take in your skin uh, to get to the proper, um, to get to a retinoid okay and to get to the the, the lower dermis the subderm um, layers that we need retinoid for okay so we can't this is a bit of a guessing game for anybody at the moment who's doing really really well with one of these creams with these retinol retinols over-the-counter retinols and has been using them maybe for three four five ten years fine absolutely brilliant i'm not suggesting you stop what i'm suggesting is you push it a little bit more okay so we've all known this one, <clears throat> the A313 that I showed you. And this time I have it up the right way around. Yay. So the A313 was, a, was is a fantastic cream and I still sing its praises. I'm still using it, although significantly less. And I'll tell you why in a moment. This is not a retinoid. It's not a retinol. It's sort of, it's, it's somewhere in the middle of a, of a no man's land. That people say, oh, I got a lot of people saying from France going, oh, our doctors prescribe it as an ointment um, for, you know, burns, minor burns and things like that. And that's true. You know, Retin-A was invented as an acne cream. It wasn't actually invented for anti-aging at all. It was just a side effect they found, they discovered. So just because a cream is given to you in one country by a doctor or by a chemist for minor burns and it's bought over the counter for minor burns, doesn't mean that that's actually the intended purpose of the cream okay this cream is a replacement for an Avibon cream as you may have heard me mention and specifically when you get it it says vitamin A synthetic okay and it's a concentrate sy synthetic okay there is a lot of other like uh, polysorbonate as well and macrogol as well in it <clears throat> they make it that kind of ointmenty emollient right when we say emollient we mean like vaseline type it's it's a dense thick gel type substance okay 
So this is more of an emollient, okay? And it has fantastic moisturizing properties. I sing the praises of it as a moisturizer combined with a retinol, okay? So something like this, <coughs> excuse me, asthma again. That's because I'm indoors all the time, not getting out. <laughs> um, I'm getting out sometimes. I'm escaping. Um, this retinol here could take three steps. We don't know because they haven't told us how much is in it. So we don't really know. We're playing a bit of a guessing game here, okay? You'll know roughly kind of where it is on the scale of ingredients by the box. And this one, I think, is about fourth down, fifth down in the box. It's not too bad. But generally speaking, it won't be one of the first ingredients because we are guessing here. This particular one, I think, is probably a two-step because it is quite good. Some of them out there may be only a, a three, maybe a three-step. But what we know for sure is the A313 is a one-step because the first ingredient in it is synthetic retin-A. Okay? So we've all seen the consistency of this. I'm showing you again, just in case, because I can never have enough of this on my hands. <laughs> I use this on my hands as well, so that's it there. So you can see it's kind of an ointmenty, shiny gel, and when it goes onto your hand, it does give this kind of shiny, you know, Vaseline type, okay? So, as I said, I found this fantastic. I found it was really, really good. So my first foray into retinols was Olay's um, and the one previous to this which was a cream I think they didn't have a retinol serum if I remember correctly but anyway it was the off-the-shelf stuff I ca we can't in Ireland we cannot buy any form of retin-a over the counter because they're afraid I don't know that people might go out and burn themselves severely or get itchy flaky skin and when they get itchy flaky skin they're going to keep using it and keep getting more itchy flaky skin because people will want things with itchy flaky that give them itchy flaky skin hmm. i don't know it's like the nurse who told me that the reason my serotide inhaler that costs 140 euros was on prescription was because that everybody be using it to get high otherwise yeah let that sink in you could buy drugs far less than 160 quid. I'm like, well, yeah, I think it's something else that's going on here. So they're the two that you can actually get. This one is, is over the counter, perfectly legal to buy in Ireland. So this is, you can buy it, but you can't buy it in Ireland. You can send away for it, okay? This one you can buy over the counter. Very good, highly recommend it. The Ole, lovely, lovely retinoid. It's a great one to start yourself off on. Then bump up to this, which is absolutely brilliant. I get this from iHerb um, because people have said to me, oh, I went to Avibon directly in the States and got it. And I'm going, there is, or in, in, in France, I beg your pardon. And I'm going, there is no Avibon in France. Avibon was the name of the cream. The people who make it are called Pharma Development. So you should be buying it off Pharma Development's website. And Pharma Development do have a website and you can buy the A313 from Pharma Development's website, which I'll click a link into below for you. The only other place I found the identical was for the, was iHerb. So iHerb got me the identical tube. Um, I didn't risk, I'm not saying that you can't buy it on Amazon, but I don't know if you're getting the right cream. But Avibon is not a brand. Avibon was the name of Pharma Development's previous incarnation of A313, okay? And the problem was they had a problem with the stability of the product because Retin-A is a quite an unstable product, it's like vitamin C, so they're all quite unstable, some like can break them down, and they had a problem with the stability of it. So they switched formulas and they called it A313. So if you're not buying it from Pharma Developments or you're not getting it from iHerb, I'm sorry, I cannot guarantee you're getting the right thing. And the dupes are very good, but they don't necessarily have the ingredients. So that being said, there you go. <clears throat> I do believe you can get it in France for three euro, which, yay, go ahead, go for it. Um, I can't imagine any cream in Ireland being three euro uh, just because of, of our standard of living and stuff is so high and, and the cost of living is high and the wages are high and everything. So we just don't get that kind of, um, we just don't, three quid for cream people would kind of go, hmm, I don't know if I should try that. So, do forgive me, 
I have no beautician because everything's locked down so my eyelashes are falling apart. Um, so that's the A313, that's the retinol. I had done both of them. I was actually applying the retinol and putting the A313 over and then I realised there's not really much point in doing both so I stuck to A313. And I was on A313 for about six weeks and I had spoken with my doctor about this because the only way to actually get retinoids or retin A in Ireland, right? Now ret this does, this is what they call a retinoid and it will go to retin A when it goes onto your skin. But the only way to get it in Ireland is through a doctor, okay? <clears throat> so I spoke to a doctor friend of mine, hi Dr. Nick, um, in Cork, um, who's fantastic, he just knows so much, it's unbelievable. And I recently had switched to a new doctor myself. So I spoke to Dr. Nick and he said, you can actually get tretinoin in Ireland on prescription. And I said, oh, fantastic, I'll get tretinoin. Tretinoin is the one we have the info on. It's the one we have probably the, the, the retin-A that we have the most conclusive and I suppose dense volume of information on. Um, anytime you look at these studies, you're going to hear, you're going to hear tretinoin, 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 tretinoin. So <clears throat> tretinoin is kind of the gold standard. That's the one we all want. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, they mix it with an antibiotic in Ireland and only give it to acne patients. And as is obvious by my skin and my age, I don't suffer from acne. I've never suffered from acne, thank God. So I'm not going to get it. My doctor was like, it's a firm no. And I'm like, okay, I don't particularly want to be putting an antibiotic on my skin every day either. I don't really need that. I need the tretinoin. I need the retin-A part of it, right? So through a bit of research with my doctor, because even my doctor didn't know about this for anti-aging you know, or skin conditions like I have, you know, age, um, not age spots, but sun damage here. Um, and he didn't really know about it either. And he kind of looked at me going, you know more than I know about this. And it, from from the skincare point of view. Um, so what we ended up discovering um, through, he's very good. My doctor is an amazing man, um, Dr. Cliff. Hi. And he went off and he did a bit of research and, and found out that you could get different. So different is Adapalene. So Adapalene is is the cream name. Now it's like tretinoin. So there's Adapalene and tretinoin. Okay. So there's two kind of retinoids we have, or retinase. Okay. Prescription tretinoin and Adapalene. There is a third one called Tazerac. I'm not going to go into that at the moment because I've no experience with Tazerac. I haven't seen many of the studies on it, um, but I do believe it's the most um, irritable of of all of them. So it's it's a, it's a lot more irritating than most. Um, <clears throat> so I stuck with, for, and I can't get it here anyway, uh, so I stuck with Tretinoin and Differin. And he told me, you know, I can get you di Differin, which is Adapalene, sorry, Tretinoin and Adapalene. They go by a lot of different brand names. Tretinoin in Spain is Retirides, so I'll put the link for that below as well, Retirides. You can get it over the counter in Spain. There's a lot of countries you can get it over the counter in. Ireland is, as always not one of them. You can't even buy two paracetamol packets in the same chemist. Yeah, kid you not. Um, so we decided to go with Differin. So he was very, very cautious and started me off on a 1% Differin. So this is what the Differin looks like when I get it from the chemist. For some reason they block out the name on it. So it's under this label that I can't get off. So it's a prescription but it is different, okay? Again, it comes with a warning not to use if you're pregnant, please. If you're pregnant, thinking of getting pregnant or breastfeeding, forget the retinols and the retinoids. Not for you, I wouldn't use any of them. So then I took it out to have a look and I'm like, oh, he's, they've covered it with this label that I tried to wash as you can see and it just won't come off. So, but it is different. So you can just vaguely see, I wonder if I can get it to focus so you can see that underneath is written different. So this is the different he gave me. <clears throat> I've had two tubes of this now um, and he's decided to give me a three month prescription now because it's been very good to my skin. So the first one I got was a cream. I found with the cream that it spread very well um, but I did tend to use a little bit more of it maybe because I it wasn't as good. This is a gel. So it was very good. 
what I immediately noticed was my 11s. Now I know I do microneedle the 11s and after microneedling, don't be surprised if your 11s and your marionette lines and stuff start to look worse initially because the skin is regenerating. It takes, a, it takes about a week to two weeks to kind of really see the... I don't do microneedling if I know I'm going anywhere for that week. So it takes a couple of weeks. So the different gel, <coughs> which I was delighted to get, but he would only give me 1%. And um, I do believe he said that to me, if I go through these three months and everything is fine, that he's going to give it to me in the 2.5%. So I'm like, yay. So, which is a little bit stronger. Um, 1%, this 1% is the equivalent. For those of you who do know tretinone and have done research on tretinone, tretinone comes in three strengths. The first strength is 0 0.025, the next strength is 0 0.05, and the next strength after that is 1%. Difference a little bit different. It comes in 1%, 2.5%, and I do believe it comes in a 3 or 3.5%. So that's so they, they equate to each other. So this is like the equivalent of a 0 0.025 tretinone. So different is the only one we can get. It's a tiny tube, as you can see it's 30 mils. Um it's a tiny one. So again, it's kind of you see it's it's a gel, but it's 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 a less uh, exclusive ex exclusive uh or in, in, inclusive, sorry, I beg your pardon, gel than the other one, and it dries in. Like, you'll see it shine there, I'm hoping you can see it shine there. And then the next minute it's dry and it's gone. So I found that soaked in very quickly. Very, very quickly. Like, and it was in. Um, <clears throat> to the best of my knowledge, I think it's probably better than the cream. It spreads better. So I can get a little to go a, a long way with this. I have started using it on my neck. And as you can see, no problems. Um, my decollage as well. I have found that like places here and here I'm getting a breakdown of my sun damage and some of the spots are appearing to be worse um, and I know Angie from Hot and Flashy said this that when she used it after a few years she had a freckle here and it was looking worse uh, and I don't think it was the freckle was looking worse. I think the rest of the skin was um, faded to correct colour like it had gone back to and that's just that little one is going to be there for a while longer so for me I'm dabbing these individually every second night and then doing the whole neck every second night and then dabbing so that's what I do I alternate it I have found it brilliant um, <clears throat> I don't know whether I should do this or not but I have done it and it's brilliant I've layered both so I've used this for the for obviously for the the medicated strength retin-a and I've used it tiny I mean less than half of what I'd normally use at this just on these areas and these areas for the moisturizing effect and then I put my normal moisturizer over so I have used to get the odd time that's why I'm using less of this nowadays because I have the different it took me about a month to persuade him to give me this so it's not easy to get in Ireland and um, some of you may have doctors who might be a bit more agreeable um, and may you allow, that's not to say they're any better or worse, it's just they're different people, different doctors, recommend different things. I was supposed to go to Spain in um, April and I was going to try out Retorides. So I was going to bring home some tubes of Retorides to try, which is the tretinone, and I was going to go up to 0.05%. Um, I'm still planning to do that, but I've had to reschedule my flights. So Ryanair obviously notified me and said, you ain't going in April. So I'm going in July instead, So, which is just in time for my 50th birthday, yay! So I'm going to spend my 50th down in Spain. So it's a place I love and it's very dear to me and I have so many dear friends down there. I always say hello to you. Hola, besos, amigos and amigas. Um, I, I really miss you all and just trying to get down there and see how things are. And um, I have not been to Lasagna Boulevard yet, so much to my disgrace. So I, I do have to get down there because every time I go, I get caught up doing other things and I never get to go to Lasagna Boulevard. So I will be getting tretinoin when I'm down there. Difference is, different is Adapalene. So it's like sort of you have Dispirin and you have two different brands of Dispirin. You know, or you have Paracetamol and you'll have you know, Pfizer's brand of paracetamol and you'll have Tesco's brand of paracetamol. 
um, they're the exact same thing, they're just different um, packaging of it, right? So they're both Retin A, but these are slightly different compounds, right? There is a bit of a difference here. So tretinoin is the one that has more evidence on it. There's less done on, da on adapalene. And that's just because adapalene is a newer form of Retin-A. So it was derived from tretinoin, but it's a less, it's known to be less irritable uh, on skin, less irritating on the skin than tretinoin. Tretinoin is known for its notorious dry spells, where it dries out everything, flakes off the skin, and, and you don't really have to go through that. If you find that you've taken it, that you've used it the first night and it's dried out your skin, don't use it the second night. Like anything with retinols and retinoids, Retin-A slowly, slowly does it. I am not a slowly does it girl. <laughs> I'm suffering for you. No, I just, I just don't. I, I, because I know my skin. So when I want to put myself something on my skin, I went, that goes okay. If I don't feel the tingling or the burning, it's fine. I'm, I'm good to go. So I would not suggest what to do what I'm doing again. My opinion here, I'm not an esthetician yet. I'm not a dermatologist, I'm not a doctor. It's just my opinion, it's just what I'm doing. I'm just trying to bring you some information. <clears throat> so at the moment in Ireland, for us lovely Irish beauties, the only one that seems to be actually able, for, you know, that we can get is unfortunately the different. That's unfortunately the different, it's very good. It's the different, we can't get known. So anybody going on holidays to Spain, eventually when this coronavirus lifts off, mention the sea world, um, you know, go get yourself some retin-E days, um, retin-E days, I beg your pardon, retin-E days. But basically Adapalene and Differin are, Differin is the brand name of Adapalene. Okay, so it's the same thing. So this is Adapalene. I'm going to try Tretinone, hopefully around July, um, and we'll get going on that. But I found this brilliant. I have to say, it was really a noticeable step up from the A313. Insofar as it does not moisturise you whatsoever. The A313 does. This will not offer you a moisturising quality whatsoever. In fact, it will be the opposite. It's an acid. It's a Retin-A. It's a, a Retin acid. It's, it's, a, it's retinoic acid. So it's going to go into your skin and it's going to dry the upper dermal layers, shed them out quickly and accelerate cell turnover. So that's how retinoids and retinoids work, is they go into your skin, dry out the top layer, it sloths off, and they accelerate the, um, the skin renewal process. The skin renewal process when you're in your 20s is about every 14, 16 days. As you get older, my age, mm -hmm, um, and older, it becomes slower and slower and slower. And it actually gets to the stage where you're probably talking, my age now, you're probably talking around 30 days every 30 days the skin would renew itself. So it's not renewing as much as it did when it's when it's younger. Um, I do believe it goes to about, it can push out to 40 as you get really, really old. Um, so what this does is it accelerates that and it trains your skin to start doing what it did um, when it was 20s. You know, and I have to say, I, I've noticed, and I don't know whether you can see it, um, to the side, I'm going up as close as I can. So, I have my sunscreen on, so when I smile, my lines go away. So this eye is the same, you know, I smile and my lines go away. So my lines are not staying. My laugh lines are not clenched into position and staying, so they're plumper. So they're doing what they should do when they're 20. When somebody smiles in their 20s, they have laugh lines and then they go away. That's exactly what mine are doing now. I'm hoping to get, you know, around here is where I need a lot more work because I, I have the technical term for these marks now. They're smoosh marks <laughs> when you sleep. Smoosh marks. So I'm trying not to sleep certain ways. I'm trying not to smush my skin. I'm also at the moment, it's an experiment I'm doing just for you and it's killing me, um, is I'm microneedling my chin once a week now. Right? So, because it is, I would not recommend this to anybody else. Just to, you know, this is something I'm doing because it actually works. So, figure out your skin does it work. I'm doing that once a week. I'm putting different on it as well. So that's retinols, retinoids. Um, any questions you have, please pop them down below. Let me know. Let me know what you think about it. But I cannot recommend Adapalene, aka different enough. It's been fantastic. It's really made a noticeable difference. So. Stay safe everybody, stay at home, enjoy, there's plenty to do. I'll have some more videos and live Q&A sessions, please God. 
So look after yourselves and stay beautiful. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye bye.